Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 16 of Stitching Between Pages. Um, I'm Robin, and you can find me on Ravelry as Half Past 92 and on Instagram and Twitter as Medieval Listing. Uh, you can find us on Ravelry, um, Stitching Between Pages podcast, we have a group. Um, and then you can find show notes for this and for all previous episodes um, at stitchingbetweenpages.blogspot.com. And there will also be a link underneath the video, um, both if you're watching on YouTube and then if you're watching straight from Ravelry, I've started putting a link um, to the show notes and the blog. The blog is just show notes. There's nothing else on there. Um, underneath in the Ravelry thread as well for the episode. Uh, so today is November 1st. Hard to believe. I'm really not sure where the year is going. Um, yeah, it's it's November 1st already. Yesterday was Halloween. Happy Halloween. Belated Halloween to everybody. Um, I did absolutely nothing. Um, I did laundry, and I was the only person in the building who was doing laundry on a Saturday night. Um, but that's all right. I, I don't mind. Um, I No reason not to do anything for Halloween. Just didn't. Um, but I got an email this morning, I think from Amazon, um, about their Black Friday deals, now that it's November 1st. And I live in the US, and I Thanksgiving is a thing, and I hate that it gets forgotten. Like, we go straight from Halloween to Christmas, and forget that there's, you know, Thanksgiving is about food and family, and I like Thanksgiving. So. Um, yeah, it's a little bit too soon. The only, I think about Christmas in terms of Christmas knitting prior to December 1st, but otherwise November is about Thanksgiving. Um, and also the end of the semester and papers and that sort of fun stuff that I get to think about again. So anyways, without further ado, let's get down to the knitting. I'm going to try to make this um, a shorter episode, and I think I said that last week and failed completely. It was the longest episode I've ever recorded, um, but I have a lot of stuff that I have to get done today, and not least of which is vacuuming because my cats are shedding because it's November. Um, so without further ado, I have a finished object, and if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I, at long last, how many episodes have I been working on these? It's ridiculous. They're, it's a pair of socks. They should have taken me a month maximum, and I think they took me more like two. Oh, well. I love them. Um, so these are my rainbow socks. I will show them one at a time. I'm showing them so you can see they do not match. Um, I just sort of went for it and let the yarn stripe as it wanted. Um, so these are knit out of some Fiber Nymph Dye Works in the Rainbow Riot colorway, and it's um, whatever of their bases has sparkles. I don't know if you can tell, but they, it does. There are sparkles on the yarn. Um, and it was kindly gifted to me by Jeanette of the Bookish Stitcher podcast. Um, and she, she heard that I loved rainbows and wanted to knit with self-striping. And so she, she gave me the perfect happy matchup of self-striping rainbows. Um, so I knit these on my standard US one and a half, which is a 2.5, 2.25. Let's see here. Oh, these don't say on them. That's frustrating. Um, US, no, US ones, which is a 2.25 millimeter. There we go. There we go. I'm knitting something else. I have a, a new project that's on a one and a half. I knit my socks on ones, which is a 2.25 millimeter, and cast on 64 stitches. I did a one by one twisted rib because I just, I think it looks really tidy. Um, and I did a fish lips kiss heel without breaking the yarn. So it, you can see it took me about three stripes to get through the heel. Um, mm. And then these stripes repeat. Um, and then I did, I've just been using the um, toe decrease pattern from the Hermione's Everyday Socks because I think it makes a nice tidy looking toe and why mess with something that works. So here's the other sock. This is the second one that I just finished. Um, I think I finished it on Friday night. Um, I decided that it was time and I love, so I have my, you know, the three stripes in the heel and I love that it's purple, red, and orange that repeat right there across the sort of the instep that where your ankle meets your foot. Um, 
yeah, so I'm super, super pleased with these. I'm so excited. This is the perfect time of year for, you know, it's November now. It's going to, get start, start, it's going to start getting cold and gray. Um, our clocks just went back last night. Um, so we got a nice extra hour of sleep this morning, which was amazing. Um, but that means it's going to start getting dark really early. Um, so it'll be nice to have something very, very cheerful on these sort of dark winter days. I must admit, I like winter. I like, I like that it gets dark early. I like that it's getting colder. I like that the leaves have, you know, pretty much finished. There's still some pretty color, but the peak is definitely past. Um, it's definitely heading towards winter. And call me weird, but this is my favorite time of year. Um, I like the glorious fall days, but I like that it's, I like winter. I don't know. So that's my only finished object, um, but I do have some works in progress. I have a couple of new works in progress, um, and so I think I'm actually going to start, though, with the work in progress that you've seen the most. Um, so this is my Hermanus hat. Well, this is the yarn. I'm knitting it out of um, Brooklyn Tweed Loft in the Almanac colorway, um, and as I've said before, I've used this yarn numerous times for accessories, and I love it. Um, I love how the yarn is so light and airy, but it makes this really wooly, sturdy fabric. Um, and I just, I like that. And so I have actually pretty much decided, I've, I've put a fair amount of progress in. I think I had um, done maybe 10 rows of the pattern last time I showed it, and I think I've now done almost 30. It doesn't sound like a lot, but um, it's 200 stitches on small needles, and it, it's hard on my hands um, with the sort of the lacy pattern. I love it, and I'm, you know, I, I'm working on it slowly but surely. Um, so you can definitely see the lace pattern now. Um, and I think I've actually pretty much decided that this is going to be a Christmas gift for a friend. I talked last episode, I think, about how this year I was not going to do any Christmas gift knitting. I just didn't have the time, and I didn't... Um, you know, I didn't want to try to commit to knitting something for all the people that I like to knit things for. Um, and then I thought a little bit harder about it. And I'm like, I don't have that many people that I give gifts to. Um, my immediate family, my grandparents, a couple of friends, um, like three, there's three friends that I exchange gifts with on a regular basis, you know, Christmas and birthday. Um, and that's really it. And to knit something small for all of those people is not that big of a deal. And uh, most of my friends are were, were all awful at Christmas gifts usually happen in February. So there is no reason at all for me not to knit for these people that I like to knit for. Um, and so I think I'm, I'm, I'm about 95% sure that I am going to gift this hat to a friend. And I'm pretty sure she doesn't watch the podcast. Um, I think she might have watched like five minutes of my first or second episode. Like, what is she, you know, what is Robin doing now? Um, but she's, she's not a knitter. Um, she, is, she is crafty and she definitely appreciate, appreciates knitted items. She's definitely one of those people who deserves hand knit things <laughs> and takes care of them and respects the amount of time that has been put into them. And you all know this. You all know that, you know, there's friends who you knit things for and there's friends who just don't get it and don't appreciate it. And that's okay. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm giving this away. Um, I think it will, I think it would suit me, but I think it will really suit her. Um, so I am knitting this on a 16 inch circular, um, with carbons, uh, Knitter's Pride carbons, um, and it's a US 2, 2.75 millimeter. Um, and I said last time that you were supposed to switch to a three after the ribbing and I didn't realize that until I was about five rows into the pattern. So we're just going to knit them on twos. Um, and I had this lovely little teeny tiny stitch marker for the round, um, that was given to me by Danny of Little Bobbins. Which reminds me, before I go any further, I must thank Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast. Um, I very briefly mentioned her in my last episode, and um, she gave me a very kind shout out in her most recent episode, um, whichever she posted last Monday. Um, and just 
Thank you, Mina. That was so sweet of you. And um, she mentioned me along with Isabel of the Fluffy Fibers podcast, which what amazing company to be in. Um, I love Isabel's podcast. If you guys don't watch Fluffy Fibers, you are you are missing out. Um, she's French. She podcasts in English. Um, although I would really like to dip my toes into the French knitting podcast, knitting podcasts in French. Um, if anybody watches any, let me know. Um, cause I, I've, I've seen a couple of them on YouTube, you know, as I'm searching around for knitting podcasts. Um, so if you know of any French knitting podcasts in French, let me know. Um, but anyways, um, Isabel is always knitting the most gorgeous, gorgeous thing. She has a lovely sense of color and style and she sews as well. She sews beautiful clothing. Um, so yeah, if you have not watched Fluffy Fibers, go check that out. If you haven't watched Mina, go check her out, um, Knitting Expat. And thank you, Mina. Uh, that was really sweet of you and I really appreciated it. Um, and if any of you are here because of that, I hope you enjoy this episode. <laughs> um, so anyways, that is that. Oh, did I say what this is? It's the Herman S. Hat by Gudrun Johnston. Um, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Definitely will not be the last of her patterns that I knit. Um, I think I've said that I have long admired her patterns, but have never knit one. Um, and so I'm knitting this. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm almost to the part where you start decreasing for the crown. And then it gets a nice little eye cord thing at the top, like berets have, you know, they have that little, what is the purpose of that? Why, who decided that you should have that little stem on your hat? But that's berets have that and this one does too. So that's, that's exciting. So that is that. Um, I'm just drinking some Twinings Earl Grey. Do, do, do. I'll show you the tag. Um, and a couple of you said how much you enjoyed the little tea explanation that I gave last week or last episode. Um, so I'm really glad you enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, and this is this is one of the teas that I mentioned. Um, and I'm just drinking it out of a little teacup. This one actually has a little teapot that sits on top of it. It's like those one, one cup teapots. I think the pot actually holds about a cup and a half in this cup. Um, I didn't, I, I just drank my coffee, so I didn't want to immediately make another um, big cup of tea. So I'm just drinking a little one. Um, the little pot that goes with this has some little robins around it. Um, it was a very sweet gift from a mother of a, a dear friend of mine. Um, but I also like the cup and I just like the sweet little pattern around the, around the rim. Um, and this is one of those cups that I don't use all that often, which I don't know why, because it's so pretty. I really should make better use of it. So the next, the other knitting things I have are actually new, which on the one hand means that I don't have that much to show you of them. Um, but on the other hand, yay for new projects. Um, last week was super busy for me, so I didn't get to do a whole lot of knitting. There were a couple nights that I got home, I did the work I had to do, and I went to bed. Um, it was a good week, it was just really long. So, as usual, I always say I don't have that much knitting, and then I show it, and I'm like, actually, Robin, you have done a fair amount of crafty things for the amount of time that you have. Um, I'm getting a lot better at like not sitting and doing nothing. Um, the time that I have to myself, I'm trying to make productive and not like, I don't mean that like, oh, I'm going to, you know, clean the house or I just told you I need to vacuum today. Um, but I try to be I'm trying to be more purposeful about how I use my time and not just like sitting, wasting my time on the internet because then I, I just regret it. And I just am sad <laughs> about what I chose to do for, you know, sitting like refreshing Facebook accomplishes nothing. You know, why am I not doing something else that I enjoy just as much knitting or crocheting a square for my blanket and watching a few minutes of a podcast or, um, you know, going for a walk or doing doing something that I enjoy that's relaxing that I'll feel good about after I've done it. I'm trying to get better at that. Not always succeeding, but trying, um, which is, that's what matters. So I am knitting um, a little coaster or mug rug or whatever you want to call it. And 
terribly. I did not look up. It's I think it's just called it's a linen stitch. It's a rectangle. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so this is one side, and I love that linen stitch is really pretty on both sides. Um, you know, it's kind of this is I guess this is technically the wrong side, um, and it's all bumpy, and then this side is is flatter. Um, you all probably know what linen stitch looks like, um, but it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I think it's called Linen Stitch Mug Mat or something like that. Um, as always, there will be a link in the show notes, and I don't remember who designed it either, um, but it was exactly what I was looking for. It was free. Um, so I'm going to make a little set of these um, as another Christmas gift. Um, I wish I'd used bigger needles. Um, the pattern suggested ones or twos, and I'm actually, I split the difference. This is the project I'm working on, on uh, one and a half, which I think is a two point five millimeter and these are um chow Gu premium stainless steel needles or no they're not because the premium ones have the weird bend that i don't like and these have this red cable and i love this red cable i don't know what they do special but it's it's really nice it's flexible but not too it doesn't sort of do this thing and then where it kinks up on itself um, and I forget what I got these for. I think I've only ever used them once, but I have this giant cable that I'm clearly not using for my 40 stitches of linen stitch rectangle. Um, I sort of wish I, I'd used a bigger needle because it's going really slow. Um, so as, as you know, with linen stitch, you slip every other stitch and then on the return row, you slip the stitches that you didn't slip the row before. So I guess kind of, you know, it takes two rows to knit every stitch once, and so it takes a long time for the fabric to, to grow. Um, but then I really like, you know, this is nice dense fabric, so it will keep your, your table or your surface safe from your mug. Um, so I can see why, they, why the pattern recommends and the designer recommends the smaller needles. So I'm hoping that I can turn out at least, certainly at least two, um, but hopefully four. And so I'm using some leftover Brooklyn Tweed Loft. I don't remember what color this is. I have um, three different browns. I have a substantial amount of two of the browns, um, which I think I used to knit. I used them to knit mittens. It was color work, stranded color work mittens. Um, gosh, a couple years ago now. Um, I think I've had the mittens for two winters. Um, two full winters, so maybe I knit them three years ago. Um, and I think they're called the Parsons mittens. I will try to remember to include that pattern in my show notes as well, because they're really great mittens. Um, they're stranded, so it's two layers. You have, you know, you have the knit layer, and then you have the, the floats on the back, and it makes it extra warm. Um, I wore them a couple times, and people were like, aren't your hands freezing with just this, you know, why aren't you wearing insulated gloves and I was like because there's two layers of wool between my hand and the environment and it's a mitten so it's already warmer because you're trapping more heat in one pocket and you have you know all your fingers to keep each other warm and my hands are just fine <laughs> I don't have the dexterity that you do with your gloves but um that's okay. So anyways, um, and then I have a third color that I used. I have much less of that third brown that I used to knit a hat. So I'm going to do, um, I think I might put some, a little crocheted scalloped edge around one, um, probably out of my um, Cascade Heritage sock that I used for, I've used this for heels, I've used it for um, heels on socks, I've, I use it to edge all of my crocheted granny squares for my blanket. It's really great yarn. Um, and so I think I'm gonna do a little crochet scalloped edge on one. Um, I think I might do some stripes in the different browns on another. Um, and then I'm going to evaluate and see how I feel after having done two. So that is another thing that I am working on. And then my other knitting work in progress is my Featherweight Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. So I knit the most bizarrely shaped swatch. I don't know why I decided that I needed to cast on this many stitches. Like what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Um, and then I 
bound off and I blocked my swatch as you do. So I, I bound off because I was like, I'm knitting too many stitches. This is ridiculous. I really only needed, you know, 30 stitches to get a, an idea of my gauge. And then I washed it and I don't, it's a garment. So I didn't block it, you know, I didn't pin it out and stretch it. I just sort of tossed it on the table and let it dry. Um, Cause that's kind of what I do with my sweaters. I lay them out sort of flat and then let them dry and do their thing. Um, and my cat got a hold of it. <laughs> so it, uh, not totally sure how accurate my idea of what my gauge is, um, is, but I think I'll be okay. Um, my, ga my gauge is a little bit larger than I, I knit this on sixes, US sixes, which is what the pattern recommends. Um, and the featherweight cardigan is by Hannah Fettig. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, are familiar because it's a hugely popular pattern. Um, so my gauge is a little bit bigger, but I really like the fabric. So I'm just going to knit the smallest size. Um, and then if it's a little bit big, it's okay. I, I think my gauge is, is one stitch out, so it's not really a big deal. Um, and I was, I was torn between knitting the smallest size and the next smallest size. And I think, I think this, the fact that my gauge is a little bit off will split the difference nicely. Um, so I will show you what I have done. Um, this morning I had a whopping three rows and I was like, I thought to myself, Robin, you can't show three rows on the podcast. That is ridiculous. You need to do a little bit more. So that's what I did while I drank my coffee this morning. I, I, it's still not very much, but it is at least more than three rows. <laughs> um, so, yep, not, not much, not very exciting yet. Um, it is just stockinette stitch. I've just begun the increase, the raglan increases. Hang on, let's see here. We can make this so it looks like a. There we go. Um, so I am knitting this on doo, 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 um, high high sharps US six, which is a four millimeter. Is that right? Hang on, let's see here. Yes, it is. Uh, US six is a four millimeter. I think this is a thirty-two inch circular. And um, these are the same needles that I knit my Bonnie tank top on, which was also out of lace weight and which turned out lovely. So I'm hoping that, you know, that continues. And I am knitting this out of um, just some knit picks, alpaca cloud um, lace weight, which is, I think it's 100% baby alpaca. I neglected to bring over the tag. Um, and this is the Beth colorway. It's this really pretty sort of muted lilac-y purple color. Um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. Um, obviously, I haven't done a whole lot, but... Um, off to a good start, and I'm really, I'm in no hurry to finish it, but I think I'm really going to enjoy knitting it. So that is that. And the other thing that I have to show in terms of, well, that's all the knitting I have for this week. Um, but I did bring over my crocheted blanket, my granny square blanket, um, because I finished adding all of the squares that I had not added last week. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I stopped. I think I think I stopped, I'd stopped here. So I crocheted up um, half of the minis that I got from Olivia, uh, This Handmade Life, and have added all of those. I wove in all of, all of, I'm holding this up with all of these ends that have not been woven in. These are the only ends that have not been woven in, these six squares that I just added. Um, I did weave in all of the other ends that were not woven in when I showed it last week. Um, so I started with this one and I've added these six squares. Um, and the only one I know, I know for sure that this is um, Tasha Marino light. Um, I don't know what the others are, but they're really pretty. I love this one. Um, so I am carrying on with this and I have a couple of a couple more squares. And this is another one. I have six more uh, minis from Olivia. And so this is one of them. Um, I wound all six of them into teeny tiny little balls and just, but I've only crocheted this pink one. I love, I, 
not a pink person again, but I really love this hot pink. <laughs> it's so much fun. Um, this is so this is really fun. And then this is obviously from my socks. Um, teeny tiny bit of yellow and a teeny tiny bit of purple, but the whole green and blue stripe. So I will probably crochet um, another mini so that I get all of the the whole rainbow in my blanket because um, this is just such special yarn. And with self striping. I think it's really easy to crochet up a couple squares and nobody has to know. So that's that. Yay! Blanket. Um, I think I have, when I add three more squares, let's see. Two, three, four, five, six. Yes, so when I've added three more squares, it will be nine squares by nine squares. So I will have 81 squares. So I guess, let's see, I have 78 now. I think that's right. Plus, two that have yet to be added and five more minis to crochet up and add from Olivia plus in acquisitions I have some more minis so this is this is exciting um I think I needed to do some swaps to reinvigorate myself and um I just don't knit fast enough to produce a substantial amount of sock weight scraps to add so um it's really nice to be able to swap with other people um And um, also, it's just nice to swap with people and get mail and um, things like that. So that is that. And I've been spinning. Yay. So I finished. Um, I showed last week, last episode. This is the first ounce. This is the second ounce. Um, so this one is sort of purple on the outside. And then it kind of goes gray. And then I don't know if you can tell, but it's this really pretty gold in the middle. Um, oh, I don't know if you can tell. Um, there you go. You can see a little bit of it. Um, so I'm not sure yet if I'm going to apply these two against each other or um, I'm going to spin. It's a four ounce braid. This is what I have left. Um, so I'm going to spin up four ounces in each one caked up separately and then figure out which two and which two, how I want to pair them to ply them. Um, so this is a beautiful braid from Yarn Rescue. Um, it is 100% Polworth in the eggplant colorway. Um, this orange is amazing. Um, but it's just, it's really beautiful. Um, and it's, this is, I'm obviously such a new spinner. This is my second spinning project. <laughs> um, but Polworth is such a delight to spin. Um, it drafts beautifully and it's, it's just so wonderful and wooly and lovely. And I, yes, good stuff, good stuff. So I have started on ounce number three, more bright orange. And here is where I am. So definitely making some headway. Um, I've gotten a lot of fiber lately. So I think that sort of kickstarted me to get back spinning. Cause there, there was a while where I didn't spin very much. Um, partially because most of my fiber was packed and my spindle was packed and I couldn't get to it. So, um, yeah, so that is that is that. This is um, it's the same spindle I show every week. It's my shocked high low um, spindle. So you could use it. I use it as a top whirl, um, but you could also use it as a bottom whirl. And I've been thinking more and more that it, it would be fun to give that a shot. Um, I just don't want to give it a shot with fiber that I want to spin and use all of. And you know, if it goes disastrously wrong. Um, That would be sad. So here's where I am. Um, you can tell I've made progress. It looks much shorter than it did last week. It sort of doesn't, you know, you can fold it in half, but you can't really curl it on itself very well anymore. Um, so yes, that is my spinning for this week, this episode. And now I think I shall show you what I have acquired over the past few weeks. Um, I am going to start out with, I um, did a swap with my friend Sylvine, who is um, Seer Spells B, I think on both Instagram and Ravelry, pretty sure. Um, and we decided that we would swap a skein of yarn and some minis um, and just some little treats. And Celine spoiled me, um, absolutely spoiled me. So thank you so much, Celine. I've, I've already told you multiple times. Thank you for this amazing, amazing, amazing package. 
Um, gosh, I don't even know where to start. I did eat the edible treats, but I did save the teas. I haven't haven't dipped into them yet, um, but I'm really excited to. There's some really exciting looking teas in here. Um, I love this one. This is just the prettiest tea bag. Look. But I think it's so funny because it says, a bag of our chamomile, Melisse, a lavande infusion bio. So it starts off in a bag of, and then it switches to French, <laughs> which I think is really funny. Um, but it is, it's made by Clipper. Um, and so it's, it's chamomile and lavender. I'm not sure what Melisse is, um, but it's manufactured in England. They're in Dorset. So maybe that explains their sort of half French, half English label. Um, and then this one, which is cold season. So I'm not sure if that's cold season, like cold weather or like cold illness, but I'm excited to try that one too. Um, and then a couple of, of chai, sweet chai and green chai. So I am excited. I will now enjoy those and stop saving them. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to pull them out. I put them in a bag to keep them all together. Um, she sent me this lovely hand cream from L'Occitane en Provence, um, which is rose and violet, and it smells amazing. I have already used it several times. Um, it smells so good. Um, it smells like roses and violets, and it's like this lovely feminine smell. Uh, she sent me some postcards of where she lives, near where she lives which, how pretty, oh, makes me want to travel. Um, and a, a note, which I won't share, but which was lovely as well. And then, oh, I mean, I'm going to get to the yarn. Um, she sent me, these must be um, origami papers. I haven't opened the package yet. Maybe I'll do that right now. Watch, sorry for the rustling. Oh. Look, papers. See, there's that one, and then there's some dots. Dots. Oh, I can't believe I hadn't opened this. I was, it was too pretty. I didn't want to, but look at how pretty the papers are. So I'm not sure. Um, oh, this one's pretty. It has France on it. Um, if I'm going to attempt to do origami, which was one of those things that, like, I did as a child, you know, one of those miscellaneous things you do as a child. Or if I'm going to use it for, like, notes and letters and things, I think that would be really fun. Um, we shall see. We shall see. Um, maybe a little bit of both so I can keep some of it and, you know, fold it into things. I think I can manage a crane. Um, I think that's probably about it, though. Uh, and then maybe I'll send some of it as, use it as, as note cards. So then the skein of yarn that she sent me is, I love this so pretty. Um, it's Regia, and it's one of the, hang on, let me pop the, she asked me if she could send it as um, a skein instead of in the ball because it was cheaper to send, and so I said, of course. Um, it is the Nuance Colors. Um, let's see, I'm trying to figure out if there is a number that I can give you. It's the, it is four ply, um, well, there you go. All of those numbers. And there it is, all knit up. And it's these beautiful blues and greens and cream. It's really pretty. Um, so I'm not sure this is going to be, this probably won't be my next socks because um, I have a couple of sock things that I want to knit for Christmas, um, which I did think about casting on, but didn't. Um, so this will probably be socks in January or so. Um, and I'm really excited for this, those socks. And then she also very sweetly sent me a skein of Rowan 4-ply soft um, because I'm pretty sure, it, hang on, let me see if I can find, it was one of the squares we swapped before and I was obsessed with this yarn. Um, it is this one right here, this lovely, lovely mushroom color. Um, I'm sure you all remember it because I talked about it all the time, several times, because I love it. So she sent me a whole skein. Um, so it might be, it might have to be saved for some sort of color work or definitely going to put a square in my blanket. Um, 
but I think it'd be really fun to do some color work, maybe some color work around the tops of, um, like the cuffs of some socks. That I think that would be fun. Um, ooh, maybe, maybe that might work actually, because um, even though this is patterned or like variegated colors, it's really subtle. And this is, I think, a strong enough color that it might stand out. We shall see. We shall see. Definitely going to put a skein in my blanket, though. And then, as if that wasn't enough, she sent me a little bag. And inside this bag are the minis. Um, but look, at how, look at how precious this little bag is. It is so cute. It has um, Les Amis de la Forêt. Forest friends, woodland friends on it. There's a little owl. I love owls, you guys. Owls and hedgehogs are my favorites. There is this tiny, adorable little turtle. And let's see here. Chipmunk and a squirrel. Little fox or a wolf, I'm not sure. And fawn. And they are so, so adorable. And then on the inside, it has this sort of cherry blossom, which... Um, I assume it's cherry blossoms anyways, which I'm just going to pretend that it is because that reminds me of DC. Um, and this bag is made by Jibby Roo Sews, um, who is on Etsy. Um, she is on Etsy, um, but there's, there's her card so you can see. And I will put it in the show notes as well, her name and a link to her Etsy shop. Um, I checked it out and she has some other lovely, some lovely other little bags. Um, so I'm really excited. I will briefly show the minis. She sent me the tiniest little sample of, um, Baron Vola Pond. Um, she says she wasn't sure if she had enough to send me a whole mini. She's making a project out of it now, but she wanted to show it to me. And of course, I've seen everybody knitting with Pond, and now having this tiny little sample just makes me want to knit with it even more. Um, so one of, one of these days, I will manage to catch an update from Baron Vola. Um, her yarn is just gorgeous. Um, but for now, I will have this, this teeny tiny little taste. And all right, I will quickly show off. The lovely minis. Um, again, lots of yarns that I have not knit with. Um, this is Cakewalk Yarns, which I haven't even heard of. Um, and it's beautiful. It's greens and blues. Um, this one is the Natural Dye Studio, and it's alpaca and silk, and it is so soft. Uh, this is Fildar Lamb's Wool. This one, hang on. Let's see if I can do this. This one which has a peacock on it, which is awesome, is Frau Odensacken. Um, it's a German hand-painted sock yarn, as you would probably guess from the name. Uh, this is Strumpfola Universal. This is Alpaca de Plassard, so I assume it is alpaca. Um, it has that lovely alpaca halo on it. Uh, this is Rowan 4 Ply Soft in a different colorway. I'm going to have to get my hands on more Rowan 4 Ply Soft because I love these colors so much. Um, when I sort of started knitting things that weren't rectangles, I knit a lot of things with Rowan yarn, and then I have not knit anything with Rowan yarn recently. So I think I should correct that. Um, this is Regia Square color. Or Regia, Regia Square, sorry, it's Regia Square. It's color 01132. And this is Drops Delight. So thank you again, Celine. This was the loveliest package, and it came at a time when I needed a lovely package to cheer me up. So that was that was all lovely. And then I was really being good and not ordering anything yarn or fiber related. And then I found a the very last of my state tax refund, which I received on a debit card. I usually, I'm usually pretty good about saving, putting that money into my savings account, my tax refund money. But because it was on a debit card, I had to spend it. So I found that debit card and it had a little bit of money left on it. And so I made an order from 
Narwhal need to work. Um, I started following her on Instagram. I think her name is Emily. Um, and I'm not even sure how I found her to follow on Instagram. Um, but she posted uh, that she was adding these to her shop. And so I went immediately, went over to her shop. And I sort of kept that page open. And I would refresh it every now and then to see, surely somebody has bought them by now. Surely there's somebody else who thinks these are the most perfect colors and wants to spend them more than I do. And then I caved because nobody else had bought them. So I bought them. So this is her card. And I will, of course, post a link. And um, here's the back. The color is Harvest Festival. It's 100% merino. How much I paid for it. Um, and she calls them pencil roving tarts. So there's, I have two ounces of, there's going to be wrestling, sorry, of these. Isn't this adorable? Look at this. It's it's pencil rubbing, but they're wound into these little tiny round cakes. So here's the whole bag, all of them. Oops, I'll show you this side without my receipt in it. Um, so I have oh, so many, and they're such pretty. I love the colors. They're kind of, it's called Harvest Festival, so they obviously are sort of, you know, fall reminiscent colors, but I think that they're also really pretty for spring, um, you know, kind of like little roses or something. But anyways, I'm so excited to spin these little guys up. Um, they're so pretty. Oh, so pretty. And there's so many of them for two ounces. I was not, I was not sure how much, what two ounces was going to look like like this. And it's a surprising amount of little tarts, fiber tarts. I mean, they look like tarts. They look like you could just eat them. Um, you know, a little, little crust and then some strawberry jam or something in the middle. Um, so yes, those are my acquisitions for this week. I should mention, this shawl is the... Um, Kelborn Woolen's Mystery Knit Along from May of 2014. I think it's called Beltane. And I did it as a Mystery Knit Along. Um, it was the second. I've done two Mystery Knit Alongs. This is the second one I did. Um, and it's knit out of a single skein of their lace weight yarn, which I think is called Meadow. And I think this colorway is called Prairie. And um, this is possibly the most difficult thing I've ever knit. Um, it got progressively more difficult the further down the shawl you went. Um, and the mystery knit along was really good at sort of easing you in and explaining what the new techniques were. Um, so this was the first time I ever did lace. Also, the only, it remains the only time that I have ever done lace where there's lace stitches on both the right side and the wrong side. Usually when I do lace, the wrong side is just purl and it lets you rest. And this was not the case. Um, so there's there's a few, um, shall we say, design elements, <laughs> by which I mean mistakes, in uh, especially early on in it's this sort of chevron. Hang on, I'll take it off again. It's the chevrony section, this section here. Um, but I did better, I think, in the this section. And then um, the last clue is an applied border. And this was, I think this was the first time I'd done an applied border. And it might remain the only time, but that's not because I thought it was difficult or didn't enjoy it. Um, and once I got, once I got the hang of doing lace stitches on the right side and the wrong side, I didn't hate it. It's, I just haven't done it because I found another pattern that I like that includes that technique. Um, so this, I'm really, I love this shawl. Um, it's a lace weight yarn. So I will, again, include a link in the show notes. So last week, I think that's all I've got, yarn and fiber related. Um, last week, I sort of unfairly teased you that I was going to talk about a book, um, a novel that I read a while ago. And I'm actually sort of glad that I waited until this week because we are coming up um, before the next time I podcast will be Veterans Day. It's I think it's a Wednesday this year, November 11th. Um, so Veterans Day in the U.S., Remembrance Day in Europe. 
um, which started after World War I and has sort of become, you know, commemorating all veterans and not just, obviously, World War I veterans. Um, so I think it's appropriate that I waited because now you can be reading this book on Veterans Day or Remembrance Day. Um, so the book is Regeneration by Pat Barker. Um, and it is the first of a trilogy. The second is called The Eye in the Door, and the third is called The Ghost Road. And I have read all the whole trilogy. Um, but Regeneration is my favorite, by far. Um, I've also read another, I think one other one of her books. Um, Toby's Room is the other book that I've read by her. Um, and so I first read this book, actually, in school um, when I was in high school. And so you can see I folded down pages and underlined things and highlighted things. And this is a pretty beaten up, well-loved, well-read. It's always fun to go back and read, you know, what, what did I think was interesting or important when I first read it? Um, versus what I might think is interesting and important now. And that's why I, I like to reread things sometimes and rewatch, you know, films and TV shows that I really enjoy. Um, but anyways, I will tell you about this book. Um, I will, I'll read the back. I read it, I last reread it, I think, was it this summer just gone? It might have been. Cat. <sighs> Holly wants to say hello. Hello, Holly. Hello. Okay, sit down. Yeah, you can be up here. You just have to sit down. So anyways, Craig Lockhart War Hospital, Scotland, 1917, where Army psychiatrist William Rivers is treating shell-shocked soldiers. Under his care, the poet Siegfried Sassoon and Wilfred Owen, as well as a mute Billy Pryor, who is only able to communicate by means of pencil and paper. Rivers' job is to make the men in his charge healthy enough to fight. Yet the closer he gets to mending his patients' minds, the harder becomes every decision to send them back to the horrors of the front. Regeneration is the classic explore exploration of how the traumas of war brutalized a generation of young men. Um, so William Rivers is a real person. Uh, Siegfried Sassoon and Wilfred Owen are also real people. Um, they were both poets, um, war poets. Um, uh, Billy Pryor is fictional, and this is fiction. Um, but it's really, it's not an easy read, but it's also, um, it's just really, she does a really wonderful job. Her way with words is amazing. Um, and her way with, it's, I think I would describe it as sort of a spare novel. Um, there's not a lot in here that's unnecessary. Um, and the way she plays with, she includes, um, I think there's a newspaper article at one point, and there's some poetry, there's some letters. Um, but it is it is a novel, but every so often there's a change in form, um, and it's just it's really good. Um, and so if you're interested in World War One at all um, or war fiction, and you have not read anything by Pat Barker, highly recommend um, Regeneration. I think it's 20 years old. Um, oh, copyright 91, so more than 20 years old. Um, yes, highly, highly recommend. Um, and if you are interested in World War, if you're interested in poetry, and I know not everybody is, so I'll be very, very brief. Um, if you're interested in poetry, or if you read this and want to read, or have read this and want to read um, some World War One poetry. World War One produced some absolutely incredible poets. Um, Siegfried Sassoon, Wilfred Owen, Rupert Brooke, um, Robert Graves, and that is the same um, Robert Graves who wrote. Um, oh gosh. Hang on, we're going to have a brief look because he wrote something that I can picture the cover about Rome, Roman things, Roman things. Um, I'm sure he did. 
Ugh. Historical novelist and poet. Okay, thank you. That is unhelpful. Um, I, Claudius. That's it. He wrote I, Claudius. Um, this is a collection, Up the Line to Death, The War Poets, 1914 to 1918, um, is an anthology of World War One poets. Um, not only the famous ones, but some others that are not as well known. Um, and this author, Brian, or this anthologizer, Brian Gardner, editor, um, also collected World War II poets. Um, and I think World War II is less known for its poetry. World War I, I think, is very, produced some very good poets, which is awful, you know, out of this sort of awful, awful, horrible tragedy. Um, you know, four years of devastating warfare. Um, and World War One is so interesting. I'm, I'm a, you know, pre-modern history is my thing. Um, after about 1800, I sort of, there's interesting things, but I'm a lot more bored, <laughs> which is terrible. Um, but World War One is a very, is a, a blip of high interest for me. Um, and this is obviously, we're in the midst of the centennial. Um, but World War One is so interesting because there's, it's sort of this clash between modern weapons, um, tanks, airplanes were used for the first time, machine guns, um, but a very old fashioned way of fighting. And that is why it was so destructive um, because techniques for fighting strategies, um, tactics hadn't yet caught up to the tremendous amount of destruction that the weapons could cause. Um, so I definitely encourage you to, um, I'll post some links to some of my favorite poems. So if you aren't, if you don't want to buy the, the whole anthology or check out the whole anthology from your library, um, but want to read a few poems, um, it's really interesting to trace sort of, you can trace how the war is going at the very beginning. There's some, some really, um, you know, of course we're going to win this war, it'll be over by Christmas, and England is amazing, and um, this is is all, I believe, all English poets. Um, I don't think there's any. And I actually don't know if, you know, did, did Germany produce war poets during World War II? Um, obviously, I know there's um, Eric, Eric Maria remarks, um, all Quiet on the Western Front, which that's another one if you haven't read and are interested in reading World War One fiction or literature. Um, highly, highly recommend. Um, there's a line, um, there's a character who's dying and there's a line, you know, he was left alone with his little, with his, his short life of 18 years and he cried because it left him. Uh, that has clearly stuck with me. I read that when I was 16. Um, and so anyways, you can you can sort of trace how the war is going by how the poets sound. Um, the Battle of the Somme in 1916, there's that was a hugely destructive um, battle. And there is an immediate shift in how the poets talk about the war and talk about, you know, how it's going and, and their dying friends. Um, it's, it's really, really poignant. Um, but... Anyways, I'm trying to think, should I read a very brief poem? Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find a short one that's not too depressing. It's, this is a very depressing one, um, but it's one of my favorites. Um, Siegfried Sassoon, um, and the poem is called The Dugout. Why do you lie with your legs ungainly huddled and one arm bent across your sullen, cold, exhausted face? It hurts my heart to watch you, deep shadowed from the candle's guttering gold, and you wonder why I shake you by the shoulder. Drowsy, you mumble and sigh and turn your head. You are too young to fall asleep forever, and when you sleep, you remind me of the dead. Um, so anyways, I'll post some links to some of my favorite poems. Um, and I think in conjunction, it must be in conjunction with the centennial, um, that there's been some really famous actors who have read some of the great World War One poems, um, and I will I'll post some links to that because 
I don't think I, I didn't start enjoying poetry until I realized that you were supposed to, it, you're supposed to read it. It's, it's so much better when you read it out loud than when you just, you know, look at a page. And, um, and I think poetry is much better when you read it, you know, you read a poem a few times and sort of chew it over and um, get a sense for how it sounds and how it works. Um, it's one of those, they pack a lot into tiny little sections. So anyways, these are the two books. And it's the appropriate time of the year to um, remember veterans and wars and things of that of that nature. So I apologize for the um, rather depressing end of my podcast this week. Um, but if any of you have read Pat Parker or have read World War One poetry um, or have any other Veterans Day related, um, you know, things. Come talk about them in the in the thread for this group on Ravelry. Um, before I finish, though, so this I guess will be a, an uplifting end after the depressing middle section of books. Um, I have been thinking, and we have never had. This is episode 16, so I've been doing this thing for 32 weeks, believe it or not, um, which is a lot of months. I'm not going to try to count the number of months between April and November. It's seven, seven months. This is the seventh month, um, which is crazy. We have never done a knit along. Um, and I don't want to do one. I don't want it to start now um, because everybody is busy with Christmas knitting. Um, I know there's other podcasters who are doing knit alongs and I don't, you know, I don't want to get in on that. This is, this is the wrong time of year. I don't want to do a knit along right now. Um, she says, as Stephen West's mystery knit along begins on Friday, <laughs> I'm going to do that one. I'm still still planning to do that one. Um, but I had a thought that occurred to me a couple nights ago. Would anybody be interested in doing a post-Christmas blues knit along? So the idea would be it would be January, possibly January and February. Um, and the idea would be to knit something with blue yarn. You anything, um, not a blanket square. It would have to be bigger than that um, to count. But a hat, a cowl, a shawl, a scarf, a garment, socks, mittens, gloves, whatever that is blue or primarily blue. Let's say that more than fifty percent blue. And I think blue is good because if there's any guys who watch, um, it's a nice manly color. Um, I like blue. If you don't like blue, I'm really sorry. Um, but what do you think? I don't. I didn't do any searching to see if that's something that's been done before. Um, you know, if that's something that other podcasters are doing, then I will come up with a new idea for knit along. But I thought it might be fun. Um, you know, knit something for yourself after the Christmas season, or finish up a belated Christmas gift. Um, in blue yarn. So let me know what you think, um, if that's something that you would be interested in joining. And I will, um, there will be some sort of prize associated with it. I don't know what yet. Haven't gotten that far. Um, this only occurred to me, this plan only occurred to me a couple days ago. Um, maybe the prize will be blue yarn. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you think that would be a good idea or if that's something you think you'd be interested in doing or if that's something that six podcasters did last year, uh, let me know. Um, and on that note, I think I'm going to leave you all. Um, it's been lovely chatting with you as always. Um, if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've watched before, thanks for watching again. Um, coming back, come on over to the Ravelry group. Um, I don't have a question for you guys this week like I have the past couple of weeks. Besides the knit along, tell me what you think about the knit along. That's my question. Because um, I want to do a knit along for you guys. Um, I think it's ridiculous that I've been doing this for so so long. And, you know, I have like 600 subscribers, which is mind blowing. Um, so yeah, I want, I want to do something for you guys. I want to do something fun. I want to do something community based. Um, and then you have a prize. Um, so let me know what you think and come over and introduce yourself and, um, chat. There's a thread for books that you're reading, um, and a thread for things that you're knitting or crocheting or spinning or whatever it is, whatever fiber craft you're doing. 
Um, so come over and, and join in. Um, and on that note, I guess I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. So have a good couple of weeks. Happy knitting. And I will see you next time. Bye.